Let's work through a few examples of identifying and drawing the products of SN2 reactions. Now, in all of these problems, we know that the reactions are SN2 for reasons that we'll discuss in more detail later, but the general process that we'll use here, in particular of identifying the nucleophile, electrophile, and leaving group, is broadly applicable to a variety of organic reactions, and it's really how we get started in identifying what's going to occur under a given set of reaction conditions. So the first step is always identifying the nucleophile, or the Lewis base, and the electrophile, or Lewis acid. In this case, we see that we have hydroxide, which is a dead ringer for a nucleophile, or a Lewis base. In this case, since we're dealing with SN2 reactions, we know that the negatively charged hydroxide will act as a nucleophile. There are three lone pairs on the oxygen, and one of these is going to be the key electron source in the SN2 mechanism. This means that the other molecule must be the electrophile, or the Lewis acid. It's the acceptor of electrons. And in particular, we notice within the structure of the electrophile a highly electronegative atom that wants to take a pair of electrons with it. This is what we refer to as the leaving group. The leaving group is always attached directly to a carbon which is partially positively charged. In this case, it's this benzylic carbon here. You'll also hear the term electrophile applied to this carbon itself. Because the electronegative atom of the leaving group is partially negative, that leaves the electrophilic carbon partially positive, and indeed, that's basically the definition of an electrophile, a partially positive atom. Once we've identified these components, drawing the product is simply a matter of applying the general idea of an SN2 reaction, which involves a nucleophile attacking the electrophilic carbon and causing loss of the leaving group. So just to show in general what these curved arrows look like, a lone pair on the nucleophile forms a new bond to the electrophilic carbon, and the electrons in the carbon leaving group bond depart and head towards the leaving group. So as the products, we'll have the conjugate base of the leaving group, which in this case is chloride ion, will be one of the products, and now the electrophilic carbon will be bonded to a hydroxyl group. Since nothing else in the structure changes, I'm just going to abbreviate the benzene ring and the CF3 group as R. In the next example, the bond between the electrophilic carbon and the leaving group is drawn out explicitly, and so we can immediately recognize that this bromine, which is partially negative, will serve as the leaving group. The carbon it's bonded to will serve as the electrophile or electrophilic carbon, and over above the arrow, which is often where we find the nucleophile, we find I minus, which will act as the nucleophile in this case. And you may see this written as NaI, and as we've seen before, it's an important skill to be able to split this mentally into Na plus and I minus. So we again apply the paradigm above to draw the product. And in the product, we're going to have I bonded to the electrophilic carbon, which I'll draw explicitly out in red. And the rest of the molecule will remain unchanged. So we'll have the carbonyl group still next door, still an oxygen here, a CH2, and a CH3. We'll also have the conjugate base of the leaving group, Br-. Yet again in this example, we see that the bond between the leaving group and the electrophilic carbon is pretty clear. The electrophilic carbon is again partially positive and the leaving group partially negative in this substrate, and that suggests that the leaving group, in a sense, wants to depart like so. So we've identified the electrophile and the leaving group. Now all that remains is to identify the nucleophile, and like many nucleophiles, it's the negatively charged cyanide ion that plays that role in this case. It's good practice just to draw the rest of the molecule, the portion that goes unchanged, before you worry too much about where the action is happening. And so we can draw all of these carbons in, including the electrophilic carbon, before worrying about the substitution process. The cyanide anion comes in and forms a bond at carbon. I'll draw that ion out explicitly like this. And a byproduct of the reaction is the conjugate base of the leaving group, as we've seen, which is bromide anion. One last example to drive these ideas home. Br serves as the leaving group. The carbon that it's bonded to is the electrophile. And here the nucleophile is the negatively charged component of this salt, or the acetate ion. The atom bearing the formal negative charge in this case is oxygen. 
But in fact, you may have noticed that both of these oxygens share the negative charge, and we can use resonance structures to illustrate that. Ultimately, because the two oxygens are sharing the charge and because they're equivalent to one another by symmetry, we can use either one as the nucleophile and draw the product as containing a new bond between the electrophilic carbon, which is here. Here I'm abbreviating all of the aromatic ring as R, and the acetate ion like so.